The Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor is a fifth generation air superiority fighter jet that is among some of the most advanced and deadliest United States Air Force fighters in operation as of 2022. The USAF has kept this particular fighter aircraft in operation for nearly 17 years since its introduction into the USAF in 2005. And its history is nothing short of complex. In 1978, American reconnaissance satellites first spotted the advanced Soviet Union Su-27 and MiG-29 fighter prototypes, which caused major concern in the US. Both Soviet models were expected to reduce the maneuverability advantage of contemporary US fighter aircrafts. Since this was a time of complex relations between the United States and Soviet Union, the US military and United States Air Force were particularly threatened by these Soviet aircrafts. To improve the efficiency and strength of their aircraft, the USAF enrolled many manufacturers to design and build the ultimate fighter jet for the Air Force and take part in a competition that came to be known by its codename, Operation Senior Sky. The two fighter jets that were manufactured for the competition were the YF-22 and YF-23 fighters, the former of which was later modified into the feared F-22 Raptor. So, let's take a look at both aircrafts to find out why the YF-22 was favored over the YF-23 and dive into their interesting histories. The YF-22 and YF-23 jets were pitted against each other in a very heated competition to replace the USAF's F-15 Eagle fighter, which was soon discovered to be inferior to the Soviet's aircraft. The reasons behind the creation of these two jets are fascinating to hear today, but remember, Back in the early 80s, it was of national urgency and importance to the USAF. In 1981, the tension surrounding the sighting of the Soviet aircraft prompted the USAF to request information from several aerospace companies on possible features for an advanced tactical fighter or ATF to replace the F-15 Eagle. Shortly after their research, the USAF issued a request for proposal to numerous aircraft manufacturers, particularly for an air-to-air -air combat fighter to be designed and manufactured. After hearing of this plan, the US Navy then made it a priority to replace their F-14 Tomcat with one of the other jet models in competition to replace the USAF's F-15 Eagle. This was now a huge task and many companies were contacted and came forth to manufacture fighter jets for the USAF and the Navy. Ultimately, two teams were formed, Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics agreed to focus on one fighter model that they proposed, while the other team, consisting of Northrop and McDonnell Douglas, would focus on the model that they proposed. This arrangement allowed for variety. Here are some reasons why the YF-23 works so well. Since this was a model tested only during the demo of the aircraft, a test pilot by the name of Paul Metz gave out some of the following information about it. He stated that the YF-23 had a superior high angle of attack performance compared to legacy aircrafts. The YF-23 was an unconventional looking aircraft with diamond-shaped wings, a profile with substantial area ruling to reduce aerodynamic drag at transonic and supersonic speeds, and an all-moving V-tail. The cockpit was placed high near the nose of the aircraft for good visibility for the pilot. The aircraft featured a tricycle landing gear configuration with a nose landing gear leg and two main landing gear legs. The weapons bay was placed on the underside of the fuselage between the nose and main landing gear. The cockpit has a center stick and side throttle. The YF-23 was powered by two turbofan engines, with each one in a separate engine nacelle with S-ducts to shield against axial compressors from radar waves on either side of the aircraft's spine. The YF-23 was designed to meet USAF requirements for survivability, supercruise, stealth, and ease of maintenance. Supercruise movements call for prolonged supersonic flight without the use of afterburners. Though the maximum speed is still classified information, sources state that it has a maximum speed greater than Mach 2 at altitude and a supercruise speed greater than Mach 1.6. After both fighters were deemed capable in air combat, the press began speculation that the YF-22's design was more suitable and adaptable to the US Navy's navalized advanced tactical fighter to replace their F-14 Tomcat. The original YF-23 design was first considered but would have had issues with flight deck space handling, storage, landing, and catapult launching, therefore requiring a different design. So it was a given that the YF-22 would be the new NATF. 
However, in 1992, the Navy abandoned the NATF plan. Finally, it was decided that the YF-22 would be selected as the new fighter to be included to the USAF's aircrafts and would begin further production. In the early 90s, the YF-22 was retired and modified into a new aircraft known very well today as the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. The prime chosen contractor, Lockheed Martin, had built most of the F-22's airframe and weapon systems and conducted final assembly while Boeing was then tasked to team up and provide the wings, aft fuselage, avionics integration, and training systems. The aircraft was designed as an air superiority fighter, but also has ground attack, electronic warfare, and signal intelligence capabilities. While only two YF-23 aircrafts and two YF-22 aircrafts were built, the USAF ordered 195 F-22 Raptors to be manufactured. As of 2022, there are 187 F-22s in operation. Now, let's take a look at some of the Raptor's features and most revered qualities. The F-22 modernization and upgrades consist of software and hardware modifications, or tactical mandates captured under numbered increments as well as software-only operation flight program updates. The first aircraft with combat-capable Block 3 software flew in 2001. The F-22's high cruise speed and operating altitude over prior fighters improved the effectiveness of its sensors and weapon systems and increased survivability against ground defenses such as surface-to-air missiles. The ability to supercruise or sustain supersonic flight without using afterburners allowed it to intercept targets that afterburner-dependent aircrafts would lack the fuel to reach. The use of internal weapons bays would permit the aircraft to maintain comparatively higher performance over most of the other combat-configured fighters due to a lack of parasitic drag from external stores. The F-22's thrust and aerodynamics enable regular combat speeds of Mach 1.5 at 50,000 feet, thus providing 50% greater employment range for air-to-air -air missiles and twice the effective range for GDAMs than with prior platforms. Its structure contained a significant amount of high-strength materials to withstand the stress and heat of sustained supersonic flight. Titanium alloys and bismuth amide epoxy composites comprise 42% and 24% of the structural weight, respectively. The F-22's aerodynamics, relaxed stability, and powerful thrust vectoring engines gave it excellent maneuverability and energy potential across its flight envelope. Overall, the F-22 Raptor was considered a successful successor to both the YF-22 and YF-23, with more modifications on their way to being implemented after further funding is collected by 2031. 